Okay, so welcome to this month's uh, workshop on Quarto. Um, first of all, what is that? What is Quarto? I mean, I guess you have a rough idea if you've joined uh, this workshop, but Quarto is a publishing system. So the idea behind it is that you can combine text, code and code output. So you could, for example, write um, a data analysis with lots of comments, lots of graphs and um, describing what's happening and combine your text, your description, uh, the code that you um, used to achieve, to construct a model, to create graphs and whatever the code output is. So that would be a model output or a graph or whatever else it is you're doing. And um, there are a ton of different output formats that you can use. Um, this quarto can be used for um, articles, including journal articles, so academic journal articles, um, slides, presentations, also websites, books and blogs and yeah. Um, and if that sounds familiar, <laughs> this is very similar to R Markdown or the idea is quite similar to R Markdown. And actually, if you know some R Markdown, you'll find that a lot of your knowledge will transfer. So if you know R Markdown and you want to give Quarto a go, it's really easy to try it and to switch if you like. And we, um, not that long ago, a few weeks ago, we did a workshop on R Markdown and I've just linked the YouTube video here. Uh, in case you want to have a look and pretty much everything we talked about in that workshop also applies today. Um, so you might be wondering like, why, <laughs> why should I be interested in, in this? Why might I, or why might anyone consider kind of switching if we already have our markdown? Um, so Quarto um, is designed to handle different output formats a little bit more seamlessly. So for example, for books, you have a package called Bookdown and for blogs, you have Blockdown and so on. And um, if you're working with R Markdown, but with Quarto, the idea is that you don't need additional packages for this, but that it all works in Quarto. So that's one thing. Um, and then Quarto can also be used for other programming languages. It can, it works with Python and Julia, and it also works in VS Code, uh, which is a code editor. Um, and I'll show you at the end, I'll show you a quick example with both of these languages in VS Code, um, but mostly will stay in our studio and um, working with R. And then I've also, I've started looking into this. So I'm definitely not an expert. I just got curious and I started looking into uh, Quarto and what the differences are between Quarto and uh, Markdown and um, what kind of nice additional features it has. And I have found a couple of um, additional features that I really like um, and that I want to show you today. So, um, and that's definitely not a comprehensive um, overview. There's actually a lot of things that you can do in Quarto. So I'll just show you a couple of um, things that state the same between R Markdown and Quarto, um, a few things that are different, and then a few additional uh, features that I've found in Quarto that I haven't found in Markdown. Um, and in case you would like to follow along or try Quarto, later for yourself and um, it needs to be downloaded so this is not like a package that you can just um that you can run from r right that you can just do install packages or something like that you do need to download it and this is the link so it's just quarter.org you can go here that's what it looks like and get started and then it'll suggest so for me because i'm on windows it'll suggest um what it thinks is the right file to download. If you want to follow along or if you want to have a look later, you can download it and then install it, right? So this is an, a difference uh, straight away between Quarto and Markdown. Markdown, you can just, um, yeah, use uh, install packages in R or, or in R Studio, um, but Quarto, you need to install like this, download and install like this, okay? Right, um, and once it is installed, you have the option of just creating, straight away creating, um, when you create a new document, it'll offer a uh, quarter to you, right? So if I click the top left here, you'll see it says quarto doc. And I'll just click on it so you can see, you can see what it looks like is it is slightly different. Um, so like, like with our markdown, you can enter obviously your title, you can enter your name or whatever, whoever the author is. And then it gives you output formats, quite a lot of them. 
um, quite a lot to choose from. We'll focus on HTML uh, today. And it also lets you straight away pick a theme. So a theme that's just uh, what kind of font do you have? What kind of a color scheme do you have in the rendered document? And you can also straight away say, I would like a table of contents and the sections should be numbered in the table of contents. You can straight away choose that. You can change or add all of that later as well, but it gives you straight away, it gives you a couple of options. Um, yeah, and then it also gives you, um, so this, the engine is basically what's going to happen once we convert from this uh, Quarto markdown format um, into HTML, like how should this happen? And we'll just leave it on Knitter, um, yeah, for now. All right, so I'll start with a little overview of what I found to be the same as in our markdown, what I found to be different um, and what I've discovered as new features, although maybe they exist in our markdown and I just wasn't aware. <laughs> you can let me know if there's something that already, already is possible in our markdown, but we'll see. Um, and then we'll, I'll show you a few demonstrations. So a few actual documents where you can see these in action, what they actually look like. Okay, so what is the same as in our markdown? Um, a lot of the YAML, so the YAML is this part at the top where you have information like your title, your author, your date, and so on. A lot of it is um, the same as in our markdown. Um, sometimes I found that uh, Quarto prefers hyphens, so kind of code minus hyphen, code minus fold instead of underscores. So that might be a difference, but most of this is very, very similar. And I could actually take uh, an R Markdown document and just copy paste it into a Quarto or as a, save it as a Quarto, QMD is the ending here, um, as a QMD Quarto document and export it, knit it, um, and it worked fine. And one small difference that you also see, it says render at the top. So this is basically knitting, right? So in R Markdown, you have knitting. And in Quarto, you have rendering to actually get to the HTML, in this case, HTML um, format. But most of the YAML is pretty similar. I'll explain, so what I've got, I've got going on here, I'll explain that um, later when we move on to the demonstrations. And then a lot of the text formatting options are the same. So making headlines um, with hashtag symbols, um, bold and italics with asterisks and so on, making lists, um, uh, all of this stuff is exactly the same. Um, then you can add references. So this is especially useful for kind of academic um, journals or well, anytime you want to credit someone else. So credit someone else's article or book or something or website, um, you can add references. Um, so that works the same, but Quarto automatically adds um, a headline at the bottom of the document that already reads references. In our markdown, you have to type that in yourself and Quarto already does it, so that's nice. And then you can also um, insert pictures, so kind of external um, JPEG or PNG or whatever files. Um, that's the same, but I've seen some more advanced kind of layout options in Quarto, and I'll show you, show you later what that looks like. Um, then what's a bit different to our markdown is um, different co in code blocks, right? So here we have a code block. The logic of that is the same, right? It's just a code block. It says R because this is going to be R code. Um, later, we ha will have code blocks in Julia and Python where it says Julia or Python here. So it's just designating the, um, the programming language that we're working in. Um, and some of these options that we would type in here in, in our markdown, right? So echo, oops, echo equals true. Um, we would type that in here in our markdown and instead we have, we have it in the code block uh, in Quarto preceded by this hashtag and pipe, right? So echo true meaning show the code, um, you would have that in the code block. Right, and there are a couple more options here that are useful. So when you create graphs, you can add this label to the graph and also a caption. And again, I'll show you an example in a second. And that also all goes in here um, and that will be displayed underneath the graph and you can use it to refer back to the graph. Um, and then you can use uh, 
yeah, these labels for in-text references. So in the in the text, you can refer back to um, figure with a specific label and it'll link you to the figure. Um, yeah, example coming up in a second. Uh, and then another dif difference that I found, um, another difference that I found between our markdown and Quarto uh, is that when you use it for slides, um, the code by default is not shown. Um, so you have to use this echo true um, command to actually show the code. You can use that in the individual code blocks or you can use echo true in the YAML, right? Um, and then a couple of new additions. So you can arrange pictures really nicely. You still add them using this kind of same syntax with the exclamation mark, the picture caption, and then actually the file path. Um, but you can use a layout by saying, okay, I, would, I want those two pictures to be uh, displayed next to each other. If two pictures and they should be displayed next to each other. Then I could just use this, right? So these three columns, and then in curly brackets, layout n calls, a number of columns equals two. And then it would make two columns and would put one picture in each column. And again, I'll have an example. And you can, as with a lot of things, um, you can customize this um, endlessly almost. So I've given you some links and in general, this quarto.org um, website has a lot of documentation. Um, and then there are, there's a new feature that I haven't seen before, which are call out blocks. So call out blocks are when you have text and you put it in a colored um, box so that it really kind of stands out. Um, there are a couple of different examples with different kind of color codings and symbols. Um, and these can be used to make text stand out. I have a couple of examples later as well. You can also use um, the margins of your document, so kind of the size of, of your document, to put references and footnotes in the margins instead of at the bottom. I haven't really seen that before. And you can put little comments in the margins as well. And figure captions you can also put um, in the margins. So let's have a look at what that actually looks like. Uh, so I'm going to try and have the code and the actual document uh, side by side. Let me find the right document. Yeah, that's the right um, document. Cool. Okay. So this is what what the right side, what you're seeing is the HTML um, version. And the left side is the, the QMD file. So this is kind of what you're working in. And then you render it and you arrive at this HTML file. So same logic as in R Markdown. All right, so we can start at the top here. You can see my title and you can see underneath a bit smaller, this is the description. So I can add this description here in the YAML. So everything that is enclosed in these three hyphens is the YAML. So that just, um, yeah, that's just kind of general properties of our file information on um, the author. Um, so you can see I can add, I can obviously add my name I can also, this is quite nice, you can link to your website. So if I hover over my name, it'll, or if I click on my name, actually, it'll uh, go to my Twitter because that's what I put in um, as the URL, right? So that's an option um, that's quite nice. And the same thing happens for my affiliation. I just put Alice Freiburg as my affiliation. And you can also associate a link with that. And if I clicked on that, that would take me to our GitHub. All right, so that's quite nice. Um, and also you have the date. And here we have a couple of um, simpler options for putting today's date. So I can just write date today. And then the day that I render this, so kind of export it to HTML, um, it'll put that date, right, as you can see. Um, there are also other options. So you can, for example, do last modified, and then the date will be when um, this file was last changed, right? So that's quite convenient. Um, and also you can also just type in any date that you would like to be shown. Um, then you see that there's this kind of dark blue uh, block uh, that forms the background for my title. That's the title block banner. 
and I can just set that to true and then it'll give me this um, blue background. But you can customize that. So if I used um, this instead, title block banner, and then this uh, hex code for colors, this is actually kind of this Our Lady's purple. So if I used that, it would change the blue color to a purple, right? So you can set your own colors um, in this title block. All right. And then here we have the output format. This is an HTML file. Um, you have a choice of lots of different themes. Mm, I've just picked one that I kind of like and that uh, that changes the font, that changes the colors that I used here, the colors of the links, for example. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and then you can see one more thing I'll uh, explain here and then we'll, we'll move on in the document. I'll explain the rest later. Is just table of contents, TOC. You can see there's a table of contents here. Okay. So when we scroll down a little bit, I'll just scroll down in this document and point out how I did, how I achieved several like features here. Um, you can see we have our headlines, right? So preparation, choosing the data that corresponds to that. And this is numbered, right? Because number sections is true, right? So I, I didn't have to type one preparation, 1.1 choosing the data, but um, Quarto did it for me because I've, I've asked it to please number the sections. So that's really helpful. Um, and then we have, this is called a block quote. So this part where it says penguins are very cute, which is has this little line on the left to make it stand out some more. Um, you just have this bigger than sign. Uh, that's the same as in our markdown, but it's a nice little feature. And then here's one of these call out blocks, right? So you can see what that looks like in the HTML. It says note and has that little information symbol. Um, and this sentence is just in this box to make it stand out a little more. And you can see what that code looks like. So again, we have these three columns followed by a curly bracket, which says call out note. So this says, okay, let's make a call out block. Call out block is just anything in this, in this colored um, box. And what kind of call out block should it be? It should be a note, right? So that just means it gets this information symbol and it gets a title, a little headline kind of note, right? That's done automatically. And then I could just type something in. So here I just have this one sentence, note that the Palmer penguins, penguins data set is meant as an alternative to the commonly used iris data. Um, and then when I want this block to end, I just type in three more colons and that's it. Right, and you can see how that shows up differently in our document. Okay, if there's any questions on anything, just um, feel free to interrupt me. All right, in the chat, and Kyla will interrupt me. <laughs> okay, um, then next we have this line that just has a link. This is again, same as in our markdown. Uh, this is the actual link in the round brackets. And then the text that will show up is in the curly brackets. So this is the same as in our markdown. Uh, and then next we have this another call out block. That's this orange um, call out block. And this is um, one where you have to, or where you can click on it to see the rest of the text, right? So this is kind of an expandable um, call out block. And the way that works in the code is use again, this similar syntax as before with this callout block, but this is a caution um, callout block. So this has this little traffic cone symbol, right? Um, and it, we can say collapse equals true, right? Because we want it to be collapsed um, by default. And then people have to click on it to actually see the rest. Uh, and we can give it a headline. So that is this expand to learn more about where the data was collected. That's this line. And then we can again type in what we'd like the rest of the box to contain and close it by typing three more columns. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. So these are some call out blocks. Here's another one, actually. I'll just jump to this one and then go back up. Um, let me show you the code for this. So this is a tip call out tip. So you can see that it has a light bulb um, icon and has a green color. Uh, this I'm calling using the data without downloading it. So this is kind of a helpful tip. Um, and you can see the structure is just the same, right? So these are three call out blocks there are actually five. And I think I've linked to them and they all work in this in the same way. Right. But this is a, I think this is a new feature. That's something I at least haven't seen in R Markdown. And I really like that. I can really see that working well for um, teaching and teaching materials. Okay, back up here. So here we're at this line, in this line. So here I'm using, uh, I'm referring to two articles. You can see in the HTML, if I hover over it, it'll tell me the source. Right, it'll give me the full reference. This is um, this works the same as in R Markdown. So I'll just fairly quickly show you because you can have a look in our um, R Markdown video. The way this works is this, that I have a um, bib text file. You can open that and have a look at that. So this is a file that you can create with your reference management system. So I'm using Citavi. This is, I think that's a pretty German one. Um, I think Zotero is probably more familiar to the non-Germans uh, in the audience. So any kind of reference management system will be able to export different um, sources or information on different articles or books that you want to reference. And here we just have these two sources. And then what I have to remember um, for using them in my document are these short names because that's what I need to refer to them. So this is Gorman 2014, that's one of them, and the other one is Horst 2020. So these are kind of the short titles that I need to use here in my code in order to be able to refer to these, right? So let's look at this again here. Here we are, right? And I can use them in square brackets so that they show up in round brackets in the text, or I can just, just type at and then the short title, um, and that will show up as author and year in brackets. And then one thing that happens automatically, really, and that's really helpful, is when you go um, all the way down, or if you click on it, I just clicked on it, but if you also scroll all the way down, you get this references section. And this will automatically be added, right? If I go to the end of my document, there's nothing here, right? This is the end of my document. There's no references section. I don't have to do that manually. Um, Quota will automatically put that in based on the information in this file. And you can even have different reference, referencing systems. Um, so the way to do that in the YAML is to say bibliography and then say what your bibliography file is called, right? So what this file, what this file is called. You can say link citation. So that just lets you do, that just lets you jump to them. So again, if I click on it, it'll jump down to the correct reference. Link citations, that's what that does. Um, and then CSL, this is where I can change the citation style. So this is another file, um, this one, this is an APA citation style. So here I can just change the citation style. And we go into a little more detail in our, our Markdown workshop that's on YouTube. So if you want to know more about this, um, you can have a look here. But this is same in Quarto as it is in our Markdown, exactly the same. Um, and that just works. Um, all right, let's go back up and see what else we can talk about. All right. Um, yeah, so here we have a list of almost like a little checklist of what we would like to do with our penguins data. Um, and you can see we have a numbered list, right? We have two asterisks to say, please make this bold. One to make it um, in italics, <clears throat> to have it show up in italics. So this is all the same. Then we have this um, call out box that I already talked about, this tip. And we actually have an aside here. So that's this uh, text, this smaller text. This is in the margin, right? So this is not in the main body of the document, but this is in the margin. 
And the code for that is you put it in square brackets. So the text that you would like to be in the margin, you put that in square brackets, and then you put curly brackets with dot aside behind it, and it'll be put in the margin, right? So that's another way of kind of adding almost like a little note um, that you want to not be in the main body of your document, but just in the margins. Okay, and now we're finally getting to some code where we're reading in the data, loading the tidyverse, dropping missing values, and just looking at the first six rows of our data. Um, but as you can see, well, you can't actually see the code here by default. We can click on it to make it visible, right? And then we can see the code. And we can actually copy paste the code. If I click on this, symbol it'll be copied and i can paste it right so i can this entire block this entire code will be copied and i can paste it somewhere so this is code folding and this is the same as an r markdown so that would be code fold true right so this is an html specific option you can imagine that in a pdf you can't really do this but in html you can do this code folding right and i've put it in the yaml um, which means that for each code block in this document, it'll be by default folded, so hidden like this, but you can click on it to see it, right? That's code folding. Okay, mm, then here you can see we have a little footnote. If we hover over it, it'll tell us that it says, note that this removes any rows with missing values, right? This refers to this drop an A command that gets rid of any row that has a missing value. And I've just put in a footnote to, to say, well, yeah, that's what that does. Um, the code for that is square brackets and caret and then one, because that's the first footnote. That's actually also possible in our markdown, I think. I just I think I just wasn't aware of it, but I think that's possible in our markdown too. Um, and here we have in-text code as well in this sentence right so here i want to know how many rows we have in our data set n row now that that we've dropped some yeah, it would be interesting to know how many we have and you can see in the html that gets converted into the answer into the number right so that's how we write that that's again same as same in our markdown and in quarto um, this just says evaluate this following r code Okay, and next we have two nice pictures next to each other with um, captions as well, and they are automatically um, numbered and labeled here. Let's look at how that works. So this is this two column um, layout that I've quickly mentioned before, right? So inserting the picture, you've probably seen that if you've worked with Markdown before, you have this exclamation mark, square brackets for the caption. Right, penguin species drawing by Alison Horst, as it shows up here. And then you have the actual picture, what the name of the picture is, and remember to add this file ending. Um, but then you can also label this. So this is in curly brackets is uh, the label, right? Um, so I've called that fake penguins. And that's the first picture. This is same, you know, same strategy for the second um, picture that I'm showing here. And the code to put these next to each other, so in two columns, basically, um, looks like this, right? So once again, we have these three columns and curly brackets. That's how you do most of these things. And we say layout and call number of columns equals two. So put the following stuff into two columns and then it puts them next to each other, right? And you can see we don't have to actually write figure one or figure two anywhere that's just done automatically. So as soon as we add this kind of label, Quarto will keep track of it. It will see, okay, this is the first time that we're doing this. So this will be figure one. And then here, it's the second time that we're doing this. Uh, so this will be figure two. And we will refer back to these later and you'll see how that works later. But we can use these labels to refer back to these pictures in the document, later in the document. Okay, mm. something else you'll see is that the text underneath here 
So first of all, this has again inline code, right? So to get to this, we're using, we're not typing these numbers, we're using inline code um, for the average bill length and the average bill depth. And then also um, the data was collected between which years we're using min on year and max on year to automatically put these numbers in instead of having to type them, right? So in case you want to do this with updated data or different data, it works the same and you don't actually have to copy paste any numbers. You can just use this inline code. Okay, but how do I actually um, get to this two column layout? So this is done with columns, right? So this entire thing, right, it's done in columns. So then quarter knows, okay, some columns will follow, but we can be very specific. We could make three columns, four columns. We could also vary the width of them. So here I'm just saying, okay, the first column is going to take up 50% of the page. So this is reactive, right? If I make the oops, wrong, wrong window. Um, if I actually make the page smaller, you can see that it gets kind of squished together, right? So this is going to take up 50% of the available space. So here I'm saying, okay, first column is gonna be 50%, half of the available space. This is the text that should go in it. And this is also enclosed by all, all these columns. Um, and then for the second column, same thing. And here I'm, I'm splitting it up 50-50, but you could also do 60-40 or 70-30 um, or 10-90 or whatever. You could really do whatever you like and you could also add more columns. You're not limited to two. You could also do more than two. Okay, so that's columns. Um, and then next, let's say, I'm, I'm not sure if people are familiar with, um, <laughs> with actually the base R syntax of pulling out um, columns. So maybe I want to give a little hint um, and compare this base R syntax to the tidyverse syntax. And I want people to be able to choose which one they want to look at. So I can use these tabs. That's what we're seeing here. And I, can, I can actually click back and forth between the two, right? So here we have code for the base R option. And here we have code for the tidyverse option. It can go back and forth between the two. Okay, and we can do that. This is a panel tab set. So that's how that works. That's the code for that. And then for each of the tabs, you just use a subheading, right? So I'm just using a subheading that says base R and one that says tidyverse. And I could keep going, right? I could keep going with different tabs here, right? So I, again, I'm not limited to two. If I kept going with these subheadings, um, yeah, this would work. I could add more tabs. All right, then let's go further down. Here we have some bullet points. This is the same as in our markdown, right? So you have asterisks and um, plus for different levels of the list. And then we have a couple of graphs. Um, these are all from the vignette. I wasn't very creative with um, <laughs> the actual contents of this um, because I was more focused on, on the design. So again, we have code being folded. So we have to click on it. And you can see that the graphs then just show up. And if we look at the code blocks, this is what I was talking about with um, more information being in the code blocks that was in my markdown was up here. Um, and I think that makes it a bit more readable. So here we have, again, we can label this. Um, just as we labeled the two uh, drawings that we had earlier. And we can give it a caption, which you can show, which you can see shows up. So penguin flipper length and body mass shows up here. And you can see that Quarto keeps numbering the figures consecutively. And then, as I was saying earlier, we can use these labels to refer back to uh, other graphs um, or pictures. So here I say refer to figure two for an explanation, explanation of the measurements. So if I click on that, it'll take me to figure two, right? And the way I've done that in the code is I've written add fig bill because I've called this fig bill. 
right? So I can refer to it in the document and then I can click on it and it'll jump back to where that figure was. Yeah, and you can see I'm doing the same thing here. Let me show you the code for that. So I've lab I'm labeling and captioning every graph that I'm making here so that I can then refer back to it, right? So I can click on that and it'll take me to this figure three. Or I can click on that and it'll take me to figure four. And here I'm actually putting the label and caption in the margin again, right? So you can see it's on the right instead of underneath. By default, it's underneath, but I can put it on the right. Um, and this is done by this argument, so cap location margin. So put the caption into the margin instead of underneath. It's another option to do this. All right, and then you can see again at the end of the document, here's my footnote. And that's where that shows up. And you can see it automatically gives it a header footnotes. I didn't have to type that in. Quarter does that automatically, just like it adds the references um, header automatically. And I can actually click on here to jump up to where this showed up in the text, right? That's where that footnote is. And it took me up there when I clicked on it. All right. Uh, Yulia, there's a question. Mm -hmm. um, can you still use the hashtag to make comments in the code blocks or does it interfere with the hashtag type syntax or additional info? Um, you should still be able to use the hashtag because this is hashtag and then pipe. So this vertical line, right? So this is the two symbols um, and you should still be able to just use the normal hashtag without, without any issues in the code blocks. Cool, there's also another question. Um, is it easier to generate docx output with Corto? Mm -hmm. um, I haven't actually tested that yet. That's a good question. I've mostly um, tested kind of HTML stuff and looked at HTML um, documents. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure. I know it's, pos it's possible for sure. If it's easier than with our markdown, I haven't had a lot of issues with um, our markdown making docs documents. I'm not sure what exactly the problems are so i say just give it a go <laughs> and let us know <laughs> let us know how it goes <laughs> great thanks all right okay cool so that was an html document but you can also make slides um, and they also look really nice and have a couple of super useful features so i've essentially taken this whole document and put it um as or yeah, try to make slides from it. And I'll just show you a couple of things that, um, yeah, are useful and a couple of things that are maybe different. Um, okay, a lot of this is very similar. Um, the format will be different. So these are slides and for slides, you have also several options. Um, I'm using reveal.js and this is for HTML formatted slides. Um, and here we also have things like a theme uh, we have to set code folding to false. So this is a big difference uh, in slides made with um, our Markdown code will by default show up just like it does here, right? You can, um, yeah, code will by default show up, but um, with Quarto and Reveal.js code will not show up by default. Um, so you actually have to say code fold false for it to to show up. Um, yeah, then theme again, I can set that. Um, I can set a footer, which you'll see, you'll see in a second because it doesn't turn up on the title slide. So let's go. Um, ooh, I think I'm kind of zoomed out a bit, but I should have a footer in here. Uh, if not, that's a bit weird. <laughs> let's see if I can make it show up. Yeah, here it is. Okay. I just had the document a bit low down, but you can see here's a footer that says a nice presentation about penguins. And then I'm once again linking um, citations and using this bibliography. So that's not, not any different. Um, yeah, and you can see that these call out blocks, um, these also work. Uh, the citations work just the same. Um, and the way I'm getting content on different slides is you can either use headers 
Um, so I think the first and second level header will say, okay, put this on the next slide, or I can use these three hyphens, right? So to make sure that this content is on one slide and then this stuff is on the next slide, what we're seeing, what we're looking at here. Uh, there's a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. Can you convert a Zeringen presentation to Corto? Ooh, um, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I don't think you can just straight up copy paste and hope it works. I don't think that works. Um, but if you adapt it a bit, it, I would guess it should work. Um, but I can't really promise that because that's also not something I tested. <laughs> <laughs> um, and can you have like an interactive table of contents or something you can click on? In the ah, yeah, what you can do, let's see, I'm kind of in a slightly awkward um, <laughs> zoomed in. And uh, 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 let me make that a little bit smaller. Okay. At the bottom left of my screen, mm -hmm. you can click on that and then you can jump to whatever slide you want. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, that's that's very, very useful. Some of these yeah, look cool. a bit weird. These are slides that don't have a header. That's why they just take the first thing on the slide. Uh, for example, this one is more information dot, 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 because this doesn't have a header. So that looks a little strange, but that's probably my fault for not, <laughs> not giving it a header. But yeah, you can jump. Uh, you can jump here, right? Yeah, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're here, All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, and then here we have an incremental list. So that means uh, we have this list showing up point by point, right? And to do that, that's, that's the code. So it just says incremental in these curly brackets, and then it'll show each point as you, um, yeah, hit the right key. Okay, and then down here we have something that is um, at the bottom of the slide and also in a, you can see kind of it's a light gray color and smaller. This is an aside. So that's what that looks like. So this is again, almost like a little comment, um, something that is not as important as the rest. So it can be a bit smaller, a bit less, um, yeah, prominently displayed, I guess. Um, okay, next slide. Yeah, so here we have the code. And I've set echo to true to make sure that the code shows up, right? Because again, by default, um, it doesn't do, do that. Uh, you can also see we have our footnote and that shows up straight on the slide. So that doesn't show up at the end of the presentation, like it showed up at the end of the document, but it shows up on the slide that it belongs to, which yeah makes sense for a presentation, I think. Um, then we have some descriptive statistics. Uh, and this again, you can see I'm using exactly the same code here to have my two column layout with the two pictures, ne pictures next to each other. I have labels and captions just like before. It's, it's numbering them automatically. Um, and then one addition I have, so this is the slide title and I've put smaller next to it. And I've done that so that this text is in a smaller font, right? So you can see, you can compare like this is in a smaller font than this text, for example. So that's a way to make the text uh, on the slides uh, appear in a smaller font by using this. Okay, and then this column syntax is exactly the same, right? This is just to make the text appear in two different columns, exactly the same, right? Um, and also the tab set, that's going to be on the next slide, where you can jump between these two options, base, our tidyverse, also exactly the same as before. Yeah, this is all the same, I think. Yeah, and then here we're getting to the graphs. Uh, again, I have to say echo true so that we uh, get the code showing up on the slide. Again, I can copy paste it, I can copy it by clicking here, that's really useful. Um, it shows me the actual graph on the next slide. You can see we again have this um, figure two linking. And then here's something that I thought was really cool. <laughs> so here I wanna make the point that 
we can show these uh, measurements separated by penguin species. And I want to highlight the code that actually achieves that, right? So I want to highlight this geome point, this line and the next line. Um, and you can see everything else is almost, almost like a little bit grayed out, right? Um, and these two lines are really prominent because that's what that's the main thing that changes between the code for the graph before that and the code for this graph. And you can do that um, with this option code line numbers. And then I've typed in four, to, four hyphen five because I want the lines four to five um, to show up as normal and the rest to be grayed out a little bit. So code line numbers and you start counting here, right? So you don't count this. When you when you pick out the line numbers but you start counting here that's line one two three four and five and then it'll show up like that so that i thought was really cool um and you can also so this is the graph right you can also do it progressively so here i want to show okay we're, we're referring back to a graph we just made so i'm highlighting line two and then I'm highlighting line three. So I can make this highlighting move from line to line. And the code for that is here. So it's again code, line numbers, and then it's two um, pipe, so this vertical line, three. So that means highlight first line two of the code and then line three. Yeah. So yeah, I thought that was pretty um neat especially again as, as a teaching tool i think that's really nice and this is the graph and these are the references for the slides i do have to type in references it won't do it automatically for me but something else that you you see i've done here is the background is a light gray color so this is different from this um white background that we had here and you can do that on any slide. I just decided I wanted to do it um, on the references slide by putting in curly brackets, background color, light gray. So light gray is, is a color that artist has available, uh, but you can also use um, hex codes for that if you want a really specific color. Yeah, yeah cool. oh, one more thing, um, unless there's a question, we can do the questions first. Question. <laughs> um, have you, do you know if you can give it a custom CSS file to change appearance? Yes, I've seen I've seen on the quarter again on this um, quarto org. Um, oops, I'm over here. I'm really getting confused with all my windows. Sorry. <laughs> so on quarto org, they have they actually have a lot of help and a lot of like, really really detailed um, articles. Um, and I've seen them mention custom CSS, so that's for sure possible. I haven't tried it, but that's for sure possible. Yeah. Cool. All right, I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to show you one more thing if I can make it work. So you can actually uh, draw on your slides, All right? So this is an option that I've clicked on down here, this paintbrush and I can pick a color and I can draw on my slides, like underline something, exclamation mark, write something. And I can even uh, have a chalkboard, which will be just a blank, blank canvas where again, I can draw or write something. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and the option to do that um, is chalkboard true. So it's just a one liner and it just gives you this. <laughs> so that's very cool. I was very excited about that. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, so this, yeah, this is, I've had a lot of fun with it um, and I wanted to just, we have just kind of seven, six minutes left. Um, so I wanted to just very quickly show you how Quarto works in Visual Studio Code with Python and Julia. So this is um, just a very quick one. If you just use R and you have no interest in whatever Python and Julia is, this is just a very quick um, look because for me, that was also very exciting. Um, so let me make this full screen. Um, and let me close this file because we don't need that. Um, so this is Visual Studio Code. Um, Visual Studio Code is just a, a code editor for um, all kinds of programming languages, really. Um, so I use it for 
to, for writing Python code and Julia code. Um, and those are also two more languages that Quoto works with. So of course I wanted to try it out. Um, if you're interested in using that and using Quarto, um, you need to install it, obviously. And then there's an extension for Quarto, Quarto that is, I think, necessary to make it work. So you can just look for extensions, type in Quarto. It's already installed for me, right? Um, and that will actually make it work. OK. And then the exciting thing here is that you can do anything that we've just talked about. Uh, in our studio, you can now do in VS Code. Um, you will probably need to install a couple more things like Jupyter and iJulia for Julia. So this is, you need to install a few more things if you want to make it work with um, Python and, and Julia in VS Code, but it didn't take me that long to set up. It, it took a little longer than, than to set it up for our studio because that was just installing Quarto, but it didn't take that long. So it's definitely, definitely possible to do. Um, and here, this is just sample code that I took straight from the Quarto um, website. Uh, you can run cells like you would in R Markdown. Um, so here I have a code cell. This has Python code. You can see it says Python in the curly brackets. It runs that, makes a little graph for us. And then it shows the output here on the, on the right-hand side. Um, and the same is true for Julia, where you can just say Julia in the code block, can run that cell, makes that, that beautiful looking <laughs> uh, graph. And all the options we've talked about, like the like labeling and giving it a caption, these are all possible and you can um, render it. And then it looks like, okay, once again, <laughs> rearranging my windows. This is what the Julia, um document would look like rendered right so it has this caption and um, just, yeah label and, and caption and here's what the python one would look like you can see it has code folding for example so it has all these options but it lets you use python and julia code as well so yeah that's really exciting for people who also write python and julia and, and or julia and have always missed um the convenience of markdown um, when working with those two languages. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think I think I've shown you all the stuff that I thought was particularly cool, but there's a lot. There really is a lot to discover. So if you're if you're at all interested, these um, tutorials or these explanations are really, really accessible and really, really detailed. Um, so have a look um, if you like. Uh, yeah, and I hope you had fun and um, we'll give it a go. Cool. Thanks, Celia. This was really cool. Um, I think everyone is really excited about Quarto, Quarto and all the things that they can do with it. So thank you yeah. a lot for this. Thanks. Yeah, it's definitely fun to, to play around with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>